Child Kyle. Part two. Um, okay, you guys. Hello, this is Miss Jenkins. You already know what's up. If you guys are just now joining me, um, this will be part two of Real Housewives of Atlanta. Season 12, episode one review. I left off talking about Candy and her conversation with Sharinda. Sharinda, I don't remember Sharinda, something, I don't know. So it, it don't matter because we already talked about it. Um, and we're going to pick up on scene four. Y'all know I just had to have my notes ready this time around, child, because I don't like being all over the place. So with that being said, we got Eva, Baby, and Michael, and they're having lunch. That ain't really too much to talk about. I ain't gonna spend so much time uh, talking about it. Eva is preggers, okay? Everybody knows by this time, you know she's pregnant. And she eating up everything in sight and some more. But that's not the, that's not the uh, point of them meeting um, for lunch. First of all, Michael obviously is just now getting back in town from whatever he does. I don't know what he does for work, but you guys can let me know down in the comments. I'm not really skeptical of Michael. I feel like he loves Eva and I feel like he knows what type of woman he has. And so I am very um, confident. I'm very confident when it comes to them. I don't worry about them. If Michael did start cheating and acting a damn fool, that would be news to me. But with that being said, let's go on ahead and move on. Um, she's talking to him, you know, just about, you know, the, the, the preparation of a new place, you know, and obviously Eva has her hands full. Some people work better under pressure. So I'm not mad at Eva for always putting herself in the most inopportune situations, but it's neither here nor there. It don't even matter. Oh, these girls are getting a little raggedy. Anyway, she explains to us that they're currently looking for a home, but you know, my job is to find everything that I like and then present it to him and then we just go do it like that. Uh, obviously, Eva is being very picky and very, uh, I don't know what the words I want to use, but I, we'll just say picky uh, so that we can move on, you know, with what she wants and that's fine. Also, um, a lot of people are complaining how long, well, you've been uh, trying to find a home since last season, sis, what's going on, what's up, da, da, da. But my thing is, it's like, it's a process, okay? Sometimes you go through escrow, escrow and shit don't work out. Sometimes you be like right there, this close. And then sometimes people back out, The whether it's the people who own the home or the people who um, are buying the home. So at the end of the day, this light right here is just murder to me. Like, I hate it. You got me looking all kinds of crazy when I ain't that crazy looking. But whatever, y'all. Let's move on. Um, so anyway, you know, they ain't really talking about nothing. Mike asks her about, um, uh, Dish, you know, and like, when is he, she going to be done with it? Because she's pregnant, you know, and as the terms roll along, you know, it's going to become less ideal for her to be covering for Portia regarding this Dish Nation. I mean, it's pretty much an easy job. You just sit there and you just talk your shit. But, you know, I don't know. I think he's just like, I'd rather my wife be at home and not doing anything, which is fine. You know, people have high-risk pregnancies and shit like that. The older you get, the more babies you have, all of that. And um, so I'm, I'm here for it. Um, but she's like, I don't know when the bitch coming back. One minute she says she coming back, the next minute it's like, uh, it's going to be an extended stay, okay, at the Marriott. So for that, she's just like, I don't know, but you know, it's a lot going on with her. You know, we hear it a lot in the blogs. We talk about it all the time, you know, and I get it. I get it. Eva has a leg to stand on to be in Portia's business because she is covering for her at her job. Of course, they're talking about it because it's Dish Nation. That's what the job, that's what the job requirements are. You guys to know the tea. So with that being said, um... Not really much to talk about here. Uh, they talk about the rumors. Eva reflects on, you know, how they did her last year with all the slanderous lies and all that. I don't know how many, how much of what she, what people were saying about her was lies. It seemed like most of it was true. It just was more to the truth than what the people were saying. That's it. But the girl, what nobody lying on you? Okay. Anywhere. That being said, let's move on to scene five. I, I'm, I'm here for Eva. Can't wait for the baby to come and all that, but. Not very exciting. More of a filler. That's fine, too. Um, scene five, child. Cynthia. Oh, child. 
Girl, Mark and Cynthia, child, let me tell you something. Now, Chill is chilling at the house, and they are talking it up, talking about their schedules for the next few months. You know, they talk about everything. Here's my thing. Here is my thing with Cynthia. My thing is going to be what everybody else thing is going to be. So, mm -hmm. my thing with Cynthia is, yes, Cynthia. This man knows that you are into him. Yes, Cynthia. This man is into you. Yes. Chill is cute. I like chill. But with all that considered, all things considered, if that man tells you, allow me to have that opportunity to do that and make that, you know, don't take that away from me. You need to go on ahead and let him do that. I get that you're doing all these cute little hints on the Instagram, posting pictures, and talking to him about rings and things and all that kind of stuff. But allow that man to handle that. I think for Mark, what's most important for Mark is like, let's talk about our future. I don't want you to, I want you to be sure that, you know, if we're going to take this step, that you know what you're getting yourself into. And he asks her like, why don't you come and move out my way? And she's like, you know, I really would, babe, but you know, my businesses are thriving right now and she just can't see herself leaving. I'm fine with it. I mean, I get it all. I get it all, all, all. Okay. But at the end of the day, y'all know what y'all are getting yourselves into. Please do not pretend when the time comes and the shit hits the fan and it gets too hard. Don't pretend as if you did not know that this was the case, that you didn't know what you were getting yourself into. Because all of you guys did, including Kenya. But that's neither here nor there. We're going to move on. Uh, with that being said, um, not really much, it's not really much there. I, I think, let me see. We thirsty? Mm-hmm. Mark advice? Uh-huh, uh, -huh, uh, -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, not much there. So with that being said, Mark asks Cynthia, why you got that goddamn wig? <laughs> why you got that carpet on the bed? You know, I like when you put the carpet on in bed, honey. And she said, well, what, what, you want me to take it off? He was like, yes. And she snatched that wig off. And I was like, well, maybe because I took a trip to the bathroom and like swung by like an edge brush and some edge control, maybe even a bonnet or like a scarf or Something to that wrap it up real cute. Something to that effect. Because, I mean, I get we didn't want to see the shaggy dog in bed. You know, he don't want to be running his fingers through your kitty, your cat up here. And then the cat fall off. And then it look, it's weird and uncomfortable. I get it. I get where Marcus is coming from. But, Cynthia, you don't have to do that like that. You don't have to do that like that, honey. But, anyways, it was a mess. And we're going to move on to scene six. Scene six. Cynthia, Mal, Kenya, and baby Brooklyn are at the Bailey Wine Cellar. It's cute. It's cute. It was cute. But according to Cynthia, she needed to take them fucking $5 bottles down up off of the top shelf and put them way on down. Not at the bottom shelf. Girl, slide them motherfuckers on down to the basement. You can use that for like a party. You, throw, <laughs> you don't need to have it. In your uh, cellar, honey. You just don't need to have it. And uh, she, Kenya, she came with it, dude. <laughs> she came with it. She was like, this is nice. You need to slide them $5 bottles down over there at the bottom shelf. But this is cute. <laughs> she said, matter of fact, just throw the whole bottle away, bitch. Put it in the basement. But with that being said, um, you know, we're, they're, they're just chopping it up, shooting the shit. Ain't nothing really uh, much going on. I took the notes, and I'm just looking at it like, it ain't really much going on. The place was cute. I like how Cynthia had it set up. Um, oh, we did we did talk about some stuff here, huh? So, um, after they finish clowning around in the cellar, they leave Mal to work because Mal's going to be taking the business over for Cynthia and I guess she's going to be managing the seller or whatever. Business seems to be a little slow. It haven't picked up yet for Cynthia because when Kenya asked her how's business, she was just kind of like, oh, it's coming along. And you know when people say that, that's some bullshit because Kenya would be like, oh, it was great. We had people lined up around the corner. It's not happening like that for you, Cynthia. And it's, it's okay. That wine cellar seems more of like a hobby in your old age than it does seem like an actual lucrative business. But I don't know anything. I don't know your business like that to y'all. Uh, I don't even know what you and Peter told showed us, but that's neither here nor there either. So um, they leave. They leave Mal to man the ship, and they go on, you know, slide on right on next door to the cookie place. 
uh, the cookies look really cute. Uh, Kenya really liked it. And she suggested that, you know, maybe you can make me some cookies for my baby's party, you know? So, um, whatever with that, uh, we said we eat cookies, we talk, um, and we basically just talking about the party, uh, for baby Brooke. Cynthia feels like my baby is a living doll and therefore I want to have a Barbie doll themed, um, coming out party for, for the baby. So that's what we're going to do. Um, uh, what else is going on? And then also, you know, Kenya, she wants to reconnect with the girls. You know, she haven't seen them. She haven't been able to hang out with them in like a whole, an entire year, season, whatever you want to call it. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, I want to reconnect with the girls. Fine. Uh, what else is going on? Oh, so then they start kind of reflecting because the last time they, ever, they were all together, it was a mess. Okay. Nene was upset. Kenya walked in pregnant as a house. Nene was upset because, you know, she felt like, you know, it was some sort of scandal going on. And I mean, just it, in reality, what it was is Kenya and Cynthia are friends, Nene, period. Whether she was there, missing in action, whatever, they're friends. So, I mean, it was fair that she was there. Kenya had been brought up a point, but I didn't really feel like the point was cohesive. She said that, I think it's funny, you know, that she got upset with the fact that I was in, that I came to the party or was invited to the party, but this is the same person who turned around and said, and knew that I, you know, was uncomfortable with a certain guest showing up, which happened to be her ex, and she still invited him. But for me, Kenya, Kenya, come here, boo. Come here, come here, come here, come here. You and Nene ain't cool like that. Y'all is not cool like that. Cynthia and Nene are cool like that. Okay, so Nene can expect more. When when Nene said, I'm not worried about what the fuck is, go you know, I'm when I'm throwing a, a, a gathering, a party, an event, I'm not worried about what the fuck Kenya Moore is, is thinking of or, or worried about. I'm worried about being fucking fabulous i'm not worried about none of that shit and i don't think that people really understand what she meant bitch i hire people to do all of this shit okay i tell them who i want there okay if i want the entire cast of bravo to be there including the motherfucking extras they are going to be there bitch because it's that type of event and the only thing i'm worried about is what i'm wearing and and, and how you know how to put it on period poo now i don't think that kenya understands that you're not nini's friend like that Period. You're not Nene's friend like that. You never were her friend like that. And y'all not going to be friends like that according to you now because she done tried to spit on you or whatever allegations you tried to uh, come with for that. But with that being said, girl, let me see. Let me make sure I didn't miss nothing from Miss uh, Kenya, uh, Miss Kenya, Miss Cynthia's conversation so I can move on to the third part of this video. Boop, boop, boop. Reflecting. You got mad. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, Kenya did give some people got, I got, I got mixed reviews on how people felt about Ke uh, Kenya telling Cynthia that she need to slow the fuck down and stop harassing that man for a ring. Some of y'all feel like Kenya cannot give no advice in the first, in the first. We seen it. We seen it in the beginning of the clip. I mean, in the beginning of the, of the show, how you had to kiss a lot of frogs, you know, and. We went over all the embarrassing shit that happened to you. How you can get a man to you, impregnate you and marry you to save your life. We went through all of that. So some people may say, <clears throat> you know, Kenya doesn't have a leg to stand on. She can't tell nobody about no relationship shit. But my thing personally is if you have been through the ringer, if you have been through some shit, be it failed or conquered, I think that you would probably be the one to go to, to talk to about these type of things. Because Kenya has kissed a lot of frogs, because she couldn't get a man to marry her or impregnate her to save her life, and now she has, I think there's a fairy tale ending there. I think she's a worthy adversary to sit and have a conversation with about these things. I mean, I wouldn't personally go to Kenya, but at the end of the day, if I'm sitting there with my friend and my friend is saying, 
Girl, do not fucking bother that man about no motherfucking ring. You will turn him the fuck off. Guess the fuck what? I'm a motherfucking listen because that's exactly what the fuck Kenya was doing. And she was turning motherfuckers off left and right. And that's why it's taking her all of these years, all of this time to get where she needed to get. People think just because they beautiful and they have everything going for them that they that they don't have to sit and wait on God to correct them, grow them up, glow them up, get them all the way together and gather them all the way to prepare them for what they do deserve, okay? You may be a woman who can handle her business as far as my profession is concerned, as far as my beauty is concerned, but what type of woman are you in a relationship because your relationships have not been successful, okay? And there's nobody running around, no circles, trying to get back in Kenya's good graces. That's all I'm saying. So with that being said, y'all, let me make sure I didn't miss nothing else up on here. Mm -hmm. Even if I did, oh, they talk about the allegations, girl. I got to talk about this. Golly, this video won't take so long to upload. They talk about the allegations with Dennis. I don't know why everybody, I don't know if production is making everyone talk about Portia's business, but and obviously they are, but Girl, we everybody in their mama's talking about it. Did you see what's going on on the blogs? Yeah, oh, with Dennis and Portia and all of that. You well, you seen, uh, you know, it's all this whole mess going on, and these allegations are disgusting like, they are so bad. Shame on everybody, shame on Dennis if it's true, and shame on everybody else, the public, and everybody else running these blog sites if it's not true. Shame, shame on y'all. But, girl, I, we talking bestiality, honey. We talking drug addiction. We talking lies, text messages, and scandals, bitch. And um, Kenya was like, well, hold on. So, <laughs> is it like he like to watch, like, dogs do it and stuff? Like, animals do it and stuff? Or do he want to stick his mm, up a dog's ass and, and, and make puppies? And, you know, Cynthia's like, girl, child, I don't fucking know. Like, this is just what we hear it. It is what it is. Kenya, my thing with you is, do you like watching animals doing this? I'm, okay, here. Anyways, with that being said, that concludes part two of my video. My review, Raniana review to be exact. I'm going to call y'all right on back about part three. And uh, we're going to get into scene seven, Portia's house. We got a lot more stuff to cover. We got a lot more stuff. We got to do uh, uh, scene eight with the OLG. Uh, oh, that shit. Ooh. And then scene nine with Baby Brooklyn's party. So we got a lot to cover. And it's probably going to be a four-part video because y'all know how I do. But I will see you guys in a minute. All right? All right, in a minute.